Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to talk about Pythagoras theorem and see how we can apply it on uh, right angle triangles. So let's begin. Uh, so the session plan for um, today is going to be an introduction on triangles to refresh our minds on what we have covered previously. And then we will talk about the Pythagoras theorem equation. And then we will see how we can apply this theorem on uh, um, triangles to find unknown sites. Okay, so if we, we have talked earlier in our previous sessions uh, about some general uh, properties for triangles. And it's good to go through them again to refresh our mind and be prepared for uh, talking about uh, Pythagoras theorem. So in general, any triangle should have uh, three angles and we call them here uh, uppercase A, uppercase B, and uppercase C. And also should have uh, three sides. We call them lowercase A, lowercase B, and lowercase C. You notice also that we have called uh, um, side A based on the opposite angle of it, which is angle A. And that's same for side C and side B. Now, um, let's talk about a special case of a triangle, which is called right angled triangle. So for this triangle, again, we do have three sides and three angles, same as uh, um, the, the previous properties we have talked about. But what is special about this triangle is that it has one angle equal to 90 degrees. Uh, in this case here, it's C. So for this uh, triangle, since it has 90 degrees uh, uh, angle, we call it right angle triangle. Also, the opposite side of uh, the, right, uh, the right angle, which is the, the longest side, we call it hypotenuse. So we can replace the name C or the notation C with hypotenuse. Okay, so the hypotenuse is the opposite side of the right angle triangle and it's the longest side uh, in the right angle triangle. Now, uh, knowing all of this information, uh, we can talk about uh, Pythagoras. Okay, so knowing all of that, we will see how we can apply this knowledge on uh, Pythagoras theorem. So Pythagoras theorem can only applied on right angle triangle, where the size of hypotenuse is equal to the square root of the sum square of other sides. So if we look at this triangle here, uh, based on our um, definition, C is the hypotenuse. And we, we can identify it by looking at the opposite angle. You can see that C, side C, is opposite to the 90 degrees angle, which is angle C. So hypotenuse here is C. So if we would like to apply this on, um, on, the, on, on the rule or on the equation, we say hypotenuse, which is C, is equal to square root of squared sum of other two sides. So the other two sides here are A and B. So that will be A squared plus B squared. So this is the shape of uh, this theorem. And again, I would like to emphasize that this uh, rule or theorem cannot be applied on other types of triangles. It's, it's, it's applicable only on right angle triangles. So let's apply this theorem on um, example and see how we can use it. So let's say that I have this triangle here where according to the question that 
it's a right angle triangle for sure because we have uh, C equal to 90 degrees. So we can use a Pythagoras theorem. We need to check this before we apply this rule. So according to the question, we would like to find the length of side C, which is the hypotenuse. I believe everyone now uh, have the ability to identify that C is equal as, as the hypotenuse because it's opposite to the 90 degrees angle. So we want to find the hypotenuse, which is side C, if we know that the length of B is equal to 5 and the length of A is equal to 12 centimeters. So as I said, Pythagoras theorem can be applied here since the triangle is a right angle triangle. So according to the rule, if we go back, the rule states that the size of hypotenuse is equal to square root or the squared sum of other sides. So I will just substitute for the value of a, which is 5, and I will square it for sure, plus I will substitute for the value of b, which is 12, and square it. So C is equal to square root of 169. And if we take the square root of that, we will find the value of C, which is the hypotenuse, and it's going to equal to 13. And if you notice, um, you see that the size of A is equal to 12, and the size of B is equal to 5 centimeters and C, which is the hypotenuse, is 13. And as we uh, um, agreed initially that the hypotenuse should be the longest side. And if you look at the answers we have, you can see that C is the longest. Okay, so let's also apply it further to um, gain more understanding of, of uh, this rule and how it can be applied on different triangles. So let's look at this example here. Example two, we want to find the length of side B in this triangle if C is equal to nine and A is equal to four centimeters. Uh, I believe you can identify that in this triangle we don't want to find the value or the length of the hypotenuse. We would like to find the value of one of the sides, but it's not the hypotenuse. So let's use um, the Pythagoras theorem since it's a right angle triangle. Okay, so we can, we can for sure use Pythagoras theorem. And let's apply and substitute or substitute the values of, of uh, C and A in this uh, formula and see how we can find the value of side B. So according to this formula, hypotenuse, which is C, is equal to square root of A squared plus B squared. So I'm going to uh, substitute for C and uh, substitute for A. So this, this is how the formula will look like. Now, if I would like to apply uh, algebraic uh, transposition um, um, here, I need to get rid of the square root. So what I will do, I will square both sides. So nine square will equal to um, the whole right-hand side squared. So in that way, I will be canceling out um, the square root. So 9 square will equal to 81, and the square root will be canceled with the square on the whole uh, bracket. So now I can uh, move the 4 square towards the 81. So B square will eventually equal to 81 minus 4 square, which is 16. So B square is going to equal to 65. And to get the value of B, I will just need to take the square root 
of 65. So this will equal to 81 centimeter. Again, if you look at or compare between the values of A, B, and C, you will see that C is the longest since it's the hypotenuse. So now um, we come across a new idea or a new manipulation for this uh, rule, which is for a right angle triangle, we have two cases. Case number one, if I would like to find the hypotenuse. So that we have illustrated this using example number one. And we said if I want to find the hypotenuse, I will just square or find the squared sum of the other two sides, the other non sides, and take the square root of them. Okay, but for case two, if I don't want to find the length of hypotenuse, I would like to find the length of other, any of the other sides. So in that case, the unknown side will equal to square root of hypotenuse square minus the non side square. And we have uh, applied this rule uh, into example number two, and we saw that um, um, it's, it can be applicable. And in that case, if I would like to find A, A will equal to the hypotenuse square, which is C square minus B square. Or if I would like to find B, that will be again hypotenuse square, which is C square minus A square. So using this uh, one of these cases, I can find uh, the length of unknown side or in, in the right angle triangle. I hope uh, this is uh, clear to all of you. Now, um, I'm going to give you some exercises and I would like you to apply uh, um, Pythagoras theorem to find unknown sides. So here I have two uh, questions, question A and question B. Um, for both questions, I would like you to find the length of the unknown sides and um, to check your whether you get the right answer or not i give you um, um, the answers here so you can uh, check whether you you get it correctly or not i hope that this uh, this is clear to you and um, you don't have any doubts or any difficulties in apply in applying pythagoras theorem or right angle triangle uh, if you have any question, please uh, don't hesitate to uh, let me know and I will be helping you for sure. Okay, have a nice day and thank you very much.